We are Squawking Dead, a podcast pulverizing episodes of the Walking Dead universe. Sometimes we give you news, sometimes we make you laugh, but most times we go deep. And today I'm here with Alania, obviously. How are you? <laughs> and Cosmom Zero and I, Rachel Burr, I'm David Cameo. Yeah, we're here today to talk about TWD episode 1022, which is the sixth and final of the bonus episodes of 10, season 10. Here's Negan. We've been waiting for this one for a long time since they actually said it was one of the roster. So here we go. But before before we do that, we have to talk about the elephant <laughs> in the room, which was AMC deciding to release Fear the Walking Dead's eighth episode of season six. The door. The door. The, door. the elephant isn't the actual episode itself. It's the fact that it was released early Sunday morning, the day that Here's Negan was publicly airing. I don't know about you guys, but given the fact that it was made available to amc plus and premiere subscribers earlier that morning i stayed away from the internet i had a feeling that something was going to happen something big this is just my impressions from dalton ross from entertainment weekly sarah beth pollock kirsten akuna even brandon davis was like you guys do not know what's you just can't you can't exp you don't know what's gonna happen and i'm here for it that's overall the moves being made for the for this season are swaying even the most harshest critics critics of fear the walking dead but putting that aside the fact that you would do that on such an epic episode of the walking dead at least in the bonus episodes it is the star of the bonus episodes in my opinion the bonus episodes are already having a hard time as it is getting the kind of traction that you would hope that they would at least with the louder contingent right because again it's a large minority that really is complaining about the bonus episodes but considering that and considering this is like one of the episodes that people have been waiting for and it got a pretty good response and then they dropped fear the walking dead's eighth episode and it's like oh my god a how are we supposed to actually be on the internet b how are we supposed to even talk about this episode given what happens in that Fear the Walking Dead episode, which is pretty epic. It's, it's a great episode <laughs> through and through. Really good episode. I'm stacking this against Here's Negan and it's like, I don't even want to talk about Here's Negan anymore. That's how good it is. That's That should be made clear. I totally agree. Fear's episode airing a week early and everyone who saw it, if they had seen Negan, they forgot the episode, honestly. Which, which does really suck because... I mean, even though this wasn't my favorite bonus episode, I did still enjoy it. I've actually, I've been looking forward to this since we met Negan. Mm. I mean, I've known about his backstory since we met him. And not only that, I was excited to see um, the changes that they would make. Because obviously it's not going to be exactly, you know, how the comic book readers know it. How they would make Negan sympathetic. Because I figured that's what was coming. They want us to to sympathize with him. Good try. <laughs> good, good try. Good not quite. <laughs> actually, so let, let me ask you as a follow-up. There's two questions. I have. <laughs> one, what was your favorite, if not this one? Well, diverged, of course. <laughs> Re really diverged of all the episodes. So wait, hold on, hold on. It was... It was so Carol heavy, so yeah. I would have thought course. maybe even like <laughs> Find Me would would have been a little bit more interesting than Diverged. It hurt me too much to see the separation between Daryl and Carol during Visually. that. Visually. <laughs> Yeah, visually see mm -hmm. it. I mean, diverged. She was going through it emotionally, and so I felt like I could be more support for her rather than watching it happen firsthand. That episode made me feel the most. How's that? That's that's why it's my favorite. So l let me before we continue with this, I prepped the the session for today's episode, right? Obviously, because that's me. And um, mm -hmm. when I prepped the the, the link for people to join the audience, I didn't realize that I, I put the guests, this, I should explain this, because everybody's like, who's this person? Who, what, what are they doing here? Well, Alani is a, a beloved friend of the podcast, obviously, uh, yes. or not obviously, you don't know, I'm telling you now, she is, so get off it. <laughs> well, you you want to be on the show? Wait for wait till I make a mistake, you can get on the show too. See, the, the story goes as this, instead of, cause there's three different links that we I can post in the uh, the coffee posts. Uh, one of them is the host link, which nobody gets, uh, and I, I don't think I can even share that link anymore. The second one is the uh, the guest link, which is basically what we I give to Rachel when we're ready to record. I give it to an interview guest, etc., which is what I gave today. 
I gave out the guest <laughs> link instead of the audience link. That's the third link. And that's the, the ability to be in the chat as we record. Obviously, if you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> when you back us on coffee.com slash squawking dead, you have the ability to join us in our recording sessions to get the unedited episodes mm -hmm. after we're done recording and the ability to join us on stream on Jackbox games. So uh, every Wednesday at either seven or eight o'clock PM, depending on how I feel. Whenever we feel yeah, like whenever it. Whenever I feel like it. Seven or eight, whatever. Deal with it. Just sit by your phones and wait. Deal with it. <laughs> So, Alania, if you had to pick a favorite of the bonus episodes, what would you pick? I still gotta go with Diverged. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I just enjoy watching Carol on there. Melissa McBride is awesome. And Doug, he is cool. Seven Torah. Hey. <laughs> Let's not forget the rat. <laughs> that's right let's not forget the rat that's true the rat the rat yeah. all oh, right so let's talk about this episode because like you said it's it's something that most of the fandom not all of us i i would have been okay never having gotten this episode however i'm not gonna we're addressing the question you must have is dave what the fuck uh i thought you said no uh pre-apocalypse flashbacks well we did get <laughs> one at least as as part of the package if you remember what i said last week about how they would do it I, there is a sort of pilot episode-esque style to the flashback the reason why they go back in time is to show the scene where he where he doesn't return the the, the jacket and they, they show him having basically like a midlife crisis he's kind of stuck in a rut can't get out of it and then the apocalypse happens he's playing the game yeah he's playing yeah the game. exactly yeah to literally li literally telling the kid you better get your shit pants on because you're gonna shit your pants <laughs> like right and you know what it's funny because you see this and you're like oh yeah i have a friend or my husband's friend who is in the same position it, right like playing video games and like i'm out of work this is COVID times right sure There's, it's so easy to relate to a character like that and especially since this was filmed during COVID, it just makes sense so i can see how that could actually get a lot of people connecting to this character this episode definitely did make me emotional but but the only reason is because it is so hard for for me i don't know about you it was hard for me to separate negan from jeffrey and lucille from hillary mm -hmm. because i would just mm -hmm. see this beautiful married couple in love and that was beautiful to me and then i would remember no it's negan and i'm like stop it <laughs> But I think that was a good tool to use, though, because these shows know what they're doing when it comes to casting and stuff like that. Like, had it not been Hillary, I'm sure it would have been fine, too. But there is just something about the epicness of Negan and the thought of not using Hillary is almost like foolish, yeah. in a sense, because you want to see that stark contrast. You want to see a loving Negan that absolutely adored his wife. Obviously, didn't really appreciate her at the time, but after having gotten the diagnosis and then showing up for her, you want to see that side of Negan. You want to be able to get that and you're not going to get that with some other I mean you will get it with some other actor. Let's just be honest with some other female actor but I, I think it was a good hack. I think it was a good hack to get yeah. all those kissing scenes, to get all those mm -hmm. loving scenes, to feel the genuine emotion from mm -hmm. these two actors, human beings Listen, when I was watching it, I agree with you. I was kind of like, is this the, is it the couple in real life or is it the couple in screen life? Mm -hmm. And at some point, it Both. didn't really matter to me. <laughs> yeah, it Right, exactly. It didn't really matter to me. That's what I'm basically saying. You want to criticize it a little too. Not at all. But once I remembered the on-screen couple, you know, my thoughts and my theories changed after that. I mean, they are really, really trying to sell us on this sympathetic Negan. This, you're like, look at what a good guy he was, which tells me that one, he's probably going to be around for all of season 11. <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't know. and he may even play a bigger part. They want us to see him as a person, not a villain anymore. So I feel yeah. like we're being set up for that. Negan as a character, kind of sort of like Rick in a weird way, does not go through the normal evolution that most characters in the Walking Dead universe do, or at least most characters that survive. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that we always say about the Walking Dead universe is that the characters become the people that they were meant to be. Negan doesn't become the person that he was meant to be. In fact, when Negan comes comes into the apocalypse, he becomes something he thought he had to be in order to survive it. But he doesn't become what he meant he's meant to be. It's only at the end of this episode when you see him sort of smiling that he finally opens the door to, <laughs> to the possibility of who this person could be now. Because now he's ready to put what he thought he had to be kind of what rick thought he had to be in order to survive the apocalypse because look, look daryl was made for this world right
right? He's built to survive, but now he has to learn how to be a person. <laughs> Michonne seemed to just gravitate to this world. She was ready. She came out sword swinging, chopped off the jaws and the, the arms and this. She, she got this. She got it. Andrea, especially like, I, I just had a conversation about, about Andrea the other day. I was just like, look, say what you want about how annoying she was. She got it just kind of like, sort of like Shane did, even though they were both kind of... <laughs> Dale didn't get it. He couldn't adapt to this world. And now, and it's only now that the Fear of the Walking Dead characters uh, are kind of going through this evolution where they're kind of meant for this world, but now they're kind of going next level to be masters of this world. Like, you know, the, the Alicia Clark and Strand especially. Gotta admit it. I mean, even, as much as I don't like what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> In Negan's case, I think that it, that's who he was and the apocalypse allowed him to be okay with that. He beat the guy up in the box put him in the hospital and he felt shame but I don't think he felt shame for what he did he felt shame because he lost his job now Lucille has to pay all this dude's medical bill like he felt shame for what happened afterwards I don't the think consequences he, the consequence I don't think he felt bad about what he did to the guy I think he'd do it again and, and now neither did Lucille by the it, way oh right she said he deserved it too and I and he had it coming and I kind of made a note about Lucille, <laughs> had she survived, I think she would have been right alongside Negan at the sanctuary. I would probably even go as far as to say, even though Hillary Burton herself says, oh, she'd be tending the garden and sprucing the place up. That's Hillary Burton. <laughs> right. That's not mm -hmm. Lucille. Right. Lucille, I think, would have run it. Yeah. For sure. Negan would have just been a hapless <laughs> lieutenant, to be honest. Maybe first lieutenant, sure. Yeah. Like number one, like he'd Riker been, on he'd the Starship Simon. Enterprise. She, Lucille would have been Negan and he would have been Simon. <laughs> well, but even to yeah. that point, he wouldn't have been Simon. Like Simon is Simon. Right. Simon is a I just, psychopath. I mean the position. You know what I mean. Right, right, <laughs> right. But let's just make that clear. Yeah. Because <laughs> Simon be Simon. <laughs> Negan would have retained that good part of him because the the whole reason why he embraces the darkness is because first of all Lucille herself tried to get the guy to tone the shit down to stop talking so loudly mm -hmm. and then Negan felt like okay she's doing her best let me step up and he even says nicely to the guy hey I really appreciate it if you'd pay for the next jukebox thing well, it's fair enough right you know it's like okay listen sorry about that I would even, I, listen if this was me obviously it'd be like oh I had no idea here to, here's a dollar play it four times but this guy got in his face and then he just lost his shit and you're talking about somebody obviously who the whole scene with him playing video games is not just to illustrate that he's a man adrift it's also to illustrate that this is where he is in life too mentally losing his job and seeing red and all that that may be like the tipping point but he's been cheating on lucille with janine for a while now and that tells you a lot he's been a shit bag for a pretty long time a man adrift for a very long time and something that i want to also bring up that we're going to repeat probably every now and again negan smith negan represents everyone everybody has this moment where they run into this rut where they're the every man and the, or the every woman you get into these habits and these routines and all this in and everyone at some point maybe and hopefully not has a breaking point you know where they lose it for one second negan uses that breaking point constantly in the apocalypse he embraces the breaking point because there are no consequences this is why i say and you may again you may yeah. disagree and that's fine because i feel like that person who uses the breaking point in the apocalypse as a means to survive it is not who they're meant to be. They're just using that moment to say, hey, this is my bat. See, it's like Lucille isn't the bat. Lucille's the moment. Lucille's the, the attitude it is what he feels he has to be to survive because he doesn't have her anymore. You have to do the fighting for both of us. The way for him to reconcile what that is, is that moment in the bar. I'm fighting for you, but literally in the bar, that's how who I have to become to survive this apocalypse. 100, 100% 100 of the time. It's as if he never really got a chance to become the kind of person he, he was meant to be. or And maybe he was never meant to be let's talk about that for a second maybe he was never meant to survive the apocalypse like he was the everyman yeah. you could even see him in the basement being like i don't believe this bitch could survive nothing nothing his wife is kicks his own ass every single time oh, he's, oh you're making a meal tonight oh you little pussy like seriously he's like he's not the negan that you expected him to be right and he's a lot different and that was one of the changes that i'm glad they made they kept lucille alive during the first part of the apocalypse which is completely different because in the comic books she dies it's almost like lucille's death triggers the apocalypse or something because like she dies and then it all falls apart but now we see what would happen if if she had 
survived a little bit longer. And and you know what? Maybe her surviving a little while would have turned him into this puddling, bumbling, pitiful not, man. Not N- Negan. Not Negan, yeah. This is what I'm basically trying to say. He was never meant to become, you know, Negan. Negan. He was never meant <laughs> to become. That's not who he is. The cue that most people take from, I always saw you the way, she says this to him at the end when she's ready to kind of give up on life. He's like, I, there are times I stay up at night and I, I, I wonder like, why in the hell you stayed with me? She goes, well, it's because I always saw you the way, the man you were meant to be right now. Who is that man? that's who he's meant to be taking care of his wife saving people that's who he thought he was who are we describing though we're kind of describing rick the Mm -hmm. man who doesn't give up on somebody will bite the neck out of out of a claimer (laughs) just to just to save his boy slight differences i i i I see where you're going i totally understand that but that's not my theory for negan i'm not saying literally (laughs) i'm saying she even says stay it's my time and he's like i'm not giving up on you which is kind of a rick move like rick wouldn't stay okay since we're right here at this moment i i I gotta ask we're just all over the place i know right (laughs) so when she asks him to stay i saw lucille realizing she was she was gonna die she knew she was gonna die the treatments weren't working and she just didn't want to be alone she knew that if he went out and looked for this medicine she would die while he was gone and she was asking asking him don't let me die alone and he left anyway part of him had to know that it was possible he he had to know that she might not survive it she might be gone when he gets back so a part of me feels like he left to avoid that which in my personal opinion is selfish because now here she was all alone died alone here's why i say i don't agree and this is me projecting that's what enables me to understand the character a little bit more because i do feel like he and me are on the same page um but let me just say what sharon says he said as much as the end he's saying while he was putting lucille to rest let's say in the fireplace that he was a coward and he ran because he didn't want to see her in pain i think part of that is true i also think that part of it is genuine too like you have to remember that she didn't die from cancer right she died because she killed herself right. right away i think there's a little bit more to that that than even the actors understand i mean i'm being bold by saying this i I recognize that but i think part of understanding lucille is saying i think this was her gift to him you need to stop holding on so hard to hope and this is the weird irony about who he becomes and calling himself self the saviors is that he becomes this character that is constantly trying to save people he doesn't give up on saving people even though he does it in the in the manner in which he needs he thinks lucille wants him to be like this seeing red character all the time but i think it was her way of saying i'm gonna eventually die he needs to learn this quick my husband needs to sack up and i cannot let him walk through life thinking he can save people it's imparting a lesson of course she's thinking about he could have been here with me while i died i think there was a little bit more generosity to her to lucille i don't think she's sitting there going boo hoo he could have been there with me i'm very sad i'm gonna kill myself that's not lucille oh no no i I, yeah we have to we have to agree to that first yeah, before i no, continue I'm, with the rest of that no I, from from lucille's standpoint i i totally agree with you i think she took her own life to spare negan the, yeah absolutely but, I, but I, also I to impart upon him that that like almost like a curse like i'm not going to let you continue having this attitude of like don't give up on me don't do this you know like oh we can save you we're gonna go through hell and high water we're gonna save you like no dude this is the way things are negan this is the way things are i'm going to go but if i go I don't want you to keep thinking that you can say, even if you save me, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Even if you manage to find the thing, I'm eventually going to, I'm not built for this world. I, this is where I'm leading to. I'm not built for this world. I was a boss, a bitch boss in the old world. I had my (laughs) shit together. I, I was the breadwinner. I mean, whatever you were doing in the high school, that's so cute, gym teacher. That's so cute. Yeah, I brought home the bacon. I'm paying <laughs> your fucking bills after after you busted that guy's face in his life in the hospital, probably. Right. But like, I I'm the the boss, bitch. But like in this world, I'm crumbling away and even if i survive this thing i don't think i want to live in this world to be honest that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking i had my licks i had my kicks like i was a i was a fucking boss in the old world I, now what am i i kind of felt like lucy
Lucille would have would have thrived because she was the one who wanted to put the walker down. She's like, you need to go take care of that. She said it several times. And he's like, oh, we'll just turn the generator off and they'll wander away. And she's like, no, you need to go take care of it. And then she's the one that put him down anyway. I I think Lucille was tougher than we give her credit for. No, no, no. I 100 percent agree with you. <laughs> I hundred percent agree with you. Here's the here's the thing. I just I just thought of this now. If that's the case, then why is she with this pussy? Because here's the here's the thing. And no, and I, I said this on purpose because she kind of he. Oh, I only say it because he said it in the episode. So I'm copying him. He said it to the gamer teenager. So there, it's this weird paradox. Okay, let's let's run the scenario. If she was to live and survive, imagine in your head right now the Negan that doesn't get the lesson she imparts on him by killing herself. Would they have st- stayed together? Given what you just said she survives yeah. moves mm-hmm. on killing mm-hmm. walkers mm-hmm. he continues nope. to be a pussy right if I think only maybe... if he continues to be a pussy i mean right <laughs> but i could but see them toughening know. up together her being alive like makes it so that he d- doesn't have to become well, yeah i guess like it, essentially just like that right which is the irony because i that's i love that little bit of irony with him and the goggles and everything like that and <laughs> gearing up kind of like eugene might have done right I love that little parallel. Like, this is why I think Negan gloms onto Eugene. Oh, you're me in the basement. Happy days. Thank you for saying that, Lania. But then you have this issue. If he does not become the man she even wants him to be, because you can see she's clearly annoyed with him. I mean, she's trying not to show it. It's like, it's okay. Drags her chemo equipment back downstairs. (laughs) Like, after shooting the walker. It's like, it's okay. But if I have to do this, like three or four more fucking times. I'm going to kill myself just to leave this world, just so I don't have to deal with your pussy ass, right? But here's the here's my point. It is a paradox because if if he was to save her, let's just say, and she doesn't kill herself, and they live past this moment, I'm sure she, the thing is, I'm sure 100% that she loves him, sees him as the man he was, he was, he is now, the doting person who cares for her and is always going to be, have her back and be there for her. You can love somebody and not want them anymore, especially because of circumstances. Mm-hmm. There is a paradox here. I immediately think of Dwight and Sherry. Mm-hmm. And I have those similar feelings too, because back then, before Negan became in the picture, I'm like thinking, yeah, that makes sense. This, these two get stronger together the more they're out there. They survive. They have to do things they don't like to do, but they accept it and they move on. Then they meet Negan, and circumstances change. And she does. Th- she has to feels like she has to do things that he is not entirely comfortable with. But that's how you survive. And then, and you see this in families all the time. They, they circumstances happen. Let's say a child dies. God forbid a child dies, and they're never the same again you can't force yeah. people to be together and so this is kind of one of those circumstances where you just got cancer at the start of the apocalypse and then like you have this chemo and all that stuff and it's like and now now you're in the apocalypse these are two different circumstances happening in tandem right now so like you can love each other all you want but if you have to live and move through this world together as the old people i don't know marriage is split for less <laughs> than the zombie apocalypse <laughs> to reiterate the paradox Say Negan saves her. Who's to say that that Lucille will even want to be with a pussy like him? <laughs> Which is weird because I think there's a part of her that offs herself to say, I think if I'm not going to want to love you anymore by the end of this and you save me, I don't want to live in that world. I love you and I don't I don't want to have to survive that world. I think I need to give you a gift. This is what it takes. Now he takes that gift and goes a thousand percent with that gift. And listen, again, I'm reiterating fully, you don't have to agree with me. I'm just thinking there is some poetry in like her saying, I'm giving you a gift. I'm offering myself to give you a gift because you need to sack up. You, you cannot live in this world thinking the way you're thinking right now honestly i think had lucille survived i think she would be sort of a leader but i think she would also be whispering in negan's ear and he would still be doing all the same things he would have done under lucille's direction let's do a plus one on that because i agree with you but much like negan she would have multiple husbands for sure for sure well, Boy, then, you have, then you have to go back to the comment where you... Well, maybe Dwight. Maybe. But then you'd have to or go Darryl. back to when you just said she 100% loves him. Oh, yeah. 100%. Mm. But she can't stand yeah. him. That's the thing. 
<laughs> because he never becomes the man that the man that he was meant to be no. now whether that's one seeing red negan the negan that we know all the time or the negan that emerges by the end of this episode neither of those two things would have happened had she not offed herself neither right. of them this is the gift she gives right. gives to him now eventually he he takes to it puts her to rest and becomes the negan maybe now that he's meant to be in the apocalypse which incorporates has to incorporate the old negan you are who you are you're not changing overnight again if she survived she wouldn't be able to stand him he's he would just never adapt he might but still not fast enough it just makes sense based on what we're seeing like they're almost at a breaking point even before the whole thing happens <laughs> she gives him a chance she had a gun for god's sake <laughs> she's about to kill him for the discretion but she saw something in him and i think that's what really carries her through even through the diagnosis even through almost getting like a death sentence saying the, the chemo's gone it's like but i still believe in you you've proven yourself that you can be a caring person that can maintain their humanity and sack up and do the thing he needs to do you know survive this world but you just need that little extra thing you need to know that sometimes you like the elton moment in the world beyond i don't blame my mom like mm -hmm. finally coming to, to the realization i don't blame my mom for being scared and having a moment because he was about to have his own by leaving percy behind mm -hmm. it's similar to that like i need to know that i can do that and then deciding maybe not to but i need to know that i at some point i might have to give up on somebody my mom was scared she just needed to survive or whatever like i don't blame her you know and this is elton saying to himself i i'm trying not to blame myself but now i now i see the choice that i have and i'm choosing to save him same thing different person same thing <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to make sure i was right but that is leah's cabin that carol takes negan to correct mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. okay yes all right I, I gotta admit there's something like very cool about having Carol back because because mm -hmm. it, it's good that you brought that up. <laughs> there, no, no, no. Do you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. She's like she's like acting all coy and shit. She's she, it feels like she's adjusted. She's a little bit more adjusted. She's being all like, yeah, I guess so. I guess it was me, not the council. Like that whole yeah. like yeah. this being like almost like a hybrid of it, the her with Ezekiel and her <laughs> caroling. <laughs> She does look like she's in a better mood this week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you like that? I did. Yeah. I loved her hair. Oh my gosh, her yeah. wig was oh. amazing. It Let's was get to so beautiful. Clearly, some time had passed. This is one thing I actually did have in my notes. It was two weeks from last yeah. episode, right? From Diverged. Yeah. 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 The thing that creeps me out a little bit is that was her hair that long in the last episode, or did it was tied up in the last episode? We never saw it down. Okay, but there is something significant about that. Her, her wearing her hair down? If, I feel like, right? I mean, the the expression, letting your hair down. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. And it was so nice and like brushed and like smooth and shiny. Not to be all shallow, but yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying... <laughs> I do hair! <laughs> Well, they're, of course they're I'm going to notice it. <laughs> it's supposed to signal something to the viewer that like, okay, sure. she's she's more adjusted. She's fairer, let's say. She's fairer skin. Because sometimes she's, people will make people yeah. look uglier or dirtier to, to illustrate, I'm, I'm beat down. I'm, I'm not quite myself. Well, right? yeah, you know? just like she was in Diverged. I mean, like you yeah. said, I mean, her hair was up, but it was Getting kind of like it. falling out. She was covered in plaster. She was. She was disheveled. So in this episode, we see her put back together. Her hair's nice. She's like, hey, I'm back. Maybe this terrain the wall helped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I got it out of my system, right? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yep. She has a brand new um, band now that plays out of that garage because she, she soundproofed the walls. And Jerry. What would that band sound Jerry like? plays. Jerry plays bass. Of course. Yeah. Okay. You're going to typecast the, the big guy as the bass player. What if he plays drums? You, you know, I almost, I just I almost him again. said, I almost said drums. Cause I could see, I could see Jerry on drums, but I think, I think he's got a funky bass line. Mm -hmm. What does Carol play? No, no Carol just stands there. Carol's on That's the keyboards. <laughs> yep. All right. All or, right. The, or the tambourine. <laughs> oh no, even better. The, the triangle. The triangle. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Fake instrument. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> give her the cowbell. <laughs> More cowbell. Jerry, give me another bass line. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. Anyway, sorry. I'm done. We got it. The apocalypse band. <laughs> yeah. The shittiest band in the world. What? Anyway. <sighs> she looks she's good at everything. She's not going to be good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that line too. Is this a uh, Carol seizing the reins type of situation from Negan? He knew. Yeah. He knew. 
what's yeah. great about that is that like it's supposed to tell you oh this negan's not gone the one that reads Mm-mm. people very well all the scenes with them together too are just so electric it's like these two one knows what the other's thinking but doesn't say it out loud carol the other says too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you you appreciate both of them for what they are too the one sneaky like yes carol's sneaky let's just put it out there she's sneaky but she does it for you know for the greater good. Yeah. Negan is not sneaky. He is. One thing I, I, I love bringing back again is that when we haven't said this in a long time, Negan is honest. I was going to say to a fault, but like to a quality. Like one thing you can't fault him for is saying, this is what I believed now at the time. I might change my mind later, but I believe this now. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to get a whole earful of it. And it's weird because I kind of want to see more <laughs> scenes with those two in them. There's this weird gross thing where I'm like, in a way, these two people like at this moment right now understand each other best. And like... Even if they might not like each other, I may be out of bounds. So you're going to strike me with a striking stick. At this moment, I feel like those two understand each be- each other better than Daryl and Carol. Negan and Carol do at, get at, each other. At this very moment, I would agree with you. But not forever. <laughs> it won't be like okay, that forever. No. Well, from your lips to Gimple's ears, let's be real here. Even at the start of season 10. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, Sharon, you just said hashtag Cargan. Would it be like Nero? Nero. Necro. Necro. Oh. oh. <laughs> or Nero. Nero. Necro. That, that makes sense. Carol Aids. Oh, yeah. Um. I can see a little wrestling going on. Anyway, so let's... I almost can't remember Carol and Daryl actually having an honest... Like, an honest moment, though, in the se- in all of season 10. Even oh. from the start. Like, when was, he fishes her out from the boat, right? I mean, it's weird, I was, because... I was gonna say Bonds. But even then, it it was false. It was... There was, there was shadiness going on. Hiding the, the pills and stuff like that. Him knowing about it, letting it happen anyway, and like not calling her out on it. And, I mean, having her back, <laughs> obviously. But but is having someone's back enough, too, right? Sometimes you have to call your friend out on your shit, right? On their shit. Mm, if you yeah. really love them. Which he did. This is what I mean by this. Even back when they were searching for Sophia, he had no problem getting, getting to his friend's face. Well, they, they weren't quite friends yet, but like he gave it to her all the time. And she appreciated it, even though it was hard for her at the time and even then from then on they've been really forthcoming and honest carol didn't have to be kind of weird and just awkward i mean obviously they had a moment they just had a fight and daryl for the first time is treading lightly instead of yelling in her face kind of thing like in scenes past it's just i can't even recall the last time they've had this kind of Oh, okay. Season nine, uh, in the sanctuary, right? He, co- she comes to visit him, mm. and they have this kind of really. That's the best moment, last moment that I've seen with them together. It was very touching and adorable. And that- she tell gives him the best advice. Maybe you know, maybe you're right. Maybe you need to speak up to Rick. You need to have your voice. And that's the basis of my analysis on him that time. That was when she told him she was going to live with Ezekiel at the kingdom too, yeah. or had yeah. or had been. Do you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be with. That that guy oh yeah yeah <laughs> that you know, is corny like he was yeah. like oh that guy <laughs> yeah but yeah you, you got it <laughs> yeah but you you can you got to do it yeah. don't be an asshole do you don't worry about me i'll be all right you just gave me good advice <laughs> come on dude <laughs> but how different is that from like every single interaction with between those two even the beginning episode where they're like oh let's go to new mexico that felt false it felt weird it felt it felt like the beginning of the schism. Daryl's just kind of like, what are you What are you talking about? All right, sounds good. Whatever, I don't believe you. <laughs> like, all right. No, it's good to be back, right? He's, they're like, it's good to see you. I missed you, blah, blah, blah. But even when, like, even from the start, when she jumped off the boat, she's like, Ezekiel, <laughs> goodbye. Even Daryl's kind of like, oh, all right, harsh. hi. And then she jumps into his arms. He's like, I guess I'm doing this. I mean, it makes <laughs> sense. I missed you. I did miss you. But obviously, Daryl's in a little different spot. He has the ASL book in his back pocket. There's something going on there. It feels like he's trying to try this thing out. And they're just in two different places. And I know I'm belaboring the point. I started off by saying Negan and Carol are like the, the two people that know each other. Feel like they, they know each other best right now. <laughs> But to illustrate the point that like, okay, really, there has been awkwardness between Daryl and Carol throughout this entire season, even before the Connie thing. As soon as one person feels like they can't be completely honest with the other person, I have this in my own life, is like, when I feel like I need to tell the person, a person that I care about something that, some truth, if I can't be fully open with 
that person, I don't feel good physically. I sound awkward to them. I can't quite speak to the way to them that I want to speak to them, right? And you see that throughout this entire season with these two people. And but you don't see that with this weird scene with Negan and Carol. They're oddly comfortable with one another, as much as a fox and a wolf can be. You know, like, <laughs> and yet they understand each other. There's like, this is easy. I get it. You don't like me. <laughs> I don't like you, but I'll deal with you because you're. I respect the hell out of you. I don't respect you, but I'm okay with you. You know, like I, I get you. I get why you do why you do in a way. This is Carol to Negan, actually. And Negan's to Carol's like, I respect you. Is anything I'm saying making sense at all? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Do you hate me for it? A little. It's no. okay if you want to. No, I don't. Okay, <laughs> if I'm if I'm gonna be if I am mad about anything, it's that you're pointing out the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it when the truth is shoved in my face like this. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna get this anywhere else. SquawkyDead.com. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Wait, hold but on, hold on a second. That's right, Squawky Dead. But you know what? It's not going to stay like that for long. They're going to fix whatever this is. And, and okay, maybe not so much in Daryl's case, but Carol has a lot of personal fixing to do. So before she can even think about repairing anything with Daryl and their friendship, she has to be she has to be a whole person first. And it looks like she's right. off to a good start in this episode. She's looking better. Mm -hmm. She's smiling. I, I'm I'm liking where this Carol is going. <laughs> you know what worries me the most is is the the same parallel that we drew with Lucille and Negan. I'm a little worried about what a what a well adjusted Carol looks like because what if that well adjusted Carol realizes, oh, I've been putting way too much of my shit on this friendship. Or maybe part of a well-adjusted Carol is like, I don't need Daryl the way I think I need him all the time, which is a good thing. And maybe that allows them to be like good, good, good friends, but maybe not quite the way we perceive them initially, like well, soulmates. It would be- But it would if be that means they're individually great, on their own yeah why is that a bad thing like if that means people are in different mm -hmm. places but they're great now mm -hmm. well that can't that can't be a bad thing right that's why i worry a little bit because i like the soulmates slash kindred spirits slash whatever you want to call those two but for as long as they're not quite 100 percent, i'd rather have them be individually 100 percent, in my opinion because that's what we all want we all want these people to best be them be their best selves yeah but if depending on one another to be that doesn't get them there yeah then i would rather them not sort of and it would hurt but it would be better if they were like whole looking fair with the hair down and it sucks but I would rather them be great, you know, than than to be constant pain or whatever. Yeah, I like what you were saying, um, you know, about a well-adjusted Carol. What would that look like? Well, first of all, I don't know that we've ever seen a well-adjusted Carol <laughs> so far. Honestly, I mean, when we meet her, she's definitely not well-adjusted. Then she's looking for her daughter. Then it's you know, this thing, then it's that, then it's this. I mean, there's always one thing after the next. And then when we, you know, when she was happy at the kingdom, that was all a fantasy. So that's not even being really was well adjusted. Was it a fantasy? Easy. Of course it was. <laughs> a six year fantasy? Of, of course it was. <laughs> Pretending to be king and queen. I mean, there was a fair amount of fantasy to it, you know, but. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess. But it was, um, you know, again. But you so, better watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, though, like, not there was totally happiness. well, I mean, right, there was, yeah. hap there was happiness, but again, like, if she was well-adjusted, we didn't see it, because we skipped over that time period anyway, and so. And that's, that's good to point out, again, again, like we said last episode. We haven't seen a well-adjusted Carol. If she were well-adjusted, and then you mentioned maybe she realizes she doesn't need Daryl the way she thought she does, I don't think that's a bad thing, because then this relationship can go from being codependent to actually a friendship. That would be That's a great thing. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And and it may not look like the way we're used to because she mm -hmm. has not been well adjusted. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's okay. Maybe they don't need they maybe they don't need to lean on each other. They don't have to be simpatico. They don't have to be locking arms as they kill walkers in a <laughs> in a circle formation. You know, like that that's okay. They know that they yeah. can, but they know they don't need to. It's always better to want someone in your life than need them in your life. Oh, oh uh oh I lost Lania. Where did Lania go? She to feed the meter the internet meter oh no <laughs>
<laughs> Can you imagine what that looks like? I, don't know. <laughs> I, I get, just pictured her like slipping dollars into her computer. <laughs> I was going to say like, there's, there's like a, like, like a billfold, like right next to the router. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like when you're at the grocery <laughs> store and you got to slide your bills into the feeder thing and it keeps spinning it back out and you're like, mother, <laughs> just straighten it out and stick I it mean, back just, in there. <laughs> wait, wait, you're doing, you're doing yeah. this thing. Like, <laughs> Flattening it out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you see what I was doing? Just I could hear it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're familiar with that sound. <laughs> I was doing it. I just didn't have any money in my hand. <laughs> I don't either. I just had a piece of paper. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> That's how sometimes I envision Sharon's internet connection. No offense, obviously, because it's not your fault. <laughs> it's nothing you could do. I guess we could keep going because we, we kind of have been. We've been, we've been steamrolling Alania all night. I, I know. We just have big I, feel per- really bad. I have big personality. <laughs> I feel really bad. Having her on the show is the equivalent of uh, when Walmart posts a price lower than they intended to, but then now you have to honor that price. That's that's <laughs> literally what we just did. He's like, oh, well, we have to honor that. And so here She's you here. are on the show. She's here. This is not good. It's not going to make it in the final edit. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's not something very flattering to tell someone. This will be on the on the cutting room floor. But hey, I didn't kick her off. So hey, fuck you. No. <laughs> Not the, you, but the internet. Everybody. Yeah, the internet. The, the greater said. internet, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> For judging me. Well, I love the points we've been making tonight though, too. I knew I was gonna bring up the, the paradox, sort of in a way. Like, would she have wanted to be with him mm-hmm. had she survived? It's like, I love you, but I can't stand you. <laughs> you are the man I envisioned you to be, but that's for a world that's well adjusted, not for this world. Mm. I can't stand you in this world. <laughs> I love you. You took care of me, blah, blah, blah. That was for the old world. Yeah. This is the new world, bitch. You're I know. not built for this. Negan, so. who couldn't even kill a walker? Like, who is this guy? Yeah. So this is exactly what I mean when I was trying to explain this whole thing. And, and it's a, it's cool to kind of think about it, like, really deeply. Like, this is, this is really the reason why she does this, I think, really. You need to know that you can't save everybody, including me. And if not for that gift, he would not have survived this world. You literally gave me the means to survive this world. And that's a lot to be thankful for. What if what it really was, was a final fuck you for leaving me? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I did think about that, though. I did think about that. Like, you left to go I did save actually me. Make... You, you left to go save me, and I'm going to make sure you can't. But... Yes, that's kind of what I'm saying, though. But I like the message that that she left behind, and you're, Charity even t- touched on it too. She yeah. said sorry. You, <laughs> you're thinking Lucille's all sweet. I'm thinking Lucille's like savage. <laughs> no, but sweet and savage for hundred percent sure. <laughs> Not like against him, but for him. Yeah, for his sake. Yeah, for his yeah. sake to be savage. Kind of like he, well, he's saying, "I'm not giving you a choice. I'm saving you." Yeah. She says, "Fuck you. I'm not giving you a choice. <laughs> you can't uh, save you, me. You're going to be yeah. the man that I want you to be now. Not the way I always thought you'd be, but the way I want you to be." And I think he kind of understands that too. This is why he anthropomorphizes the bat. Having that context makes Lucille give me strength. So so much more meaning, right? <laughs> yeah. Lucille, give me strength. Help me see red. Give me the power that I, I need to do the thing that I think you want me to do. It's so cool to have that context now because I never understood it, to be honest. Yeah. I never understood it. I really didn't. I thought it was kind of cool, but I was like, but what does that mean? What does it mean? <laughs> this is Okay, I'm going to bring up the, the moment that disappointed me in this episode. I'm just going to say a little bit because... Eh. I wanted Lucille to be the first person Negan put down with Lucille. Is that how it happened in the comic? No. No. No, that's just what I wanted for the episode. I wanted that to be like how she got her name. Mm. I see what you're saying, but given what they were trying to do... You're saying without context, like without seeing this episode, that's how you kind of wanted it to come down? Or is that... No, during the episode. Yeah, while watching Mm. it, I I thought he was going to give her mercy with, with Lucille. Or Walker version of her? Well, yeah, Walker. I mean, Walker yeah. Lucille with the bat. Yeah. You know what's funny about what what you're saying right now is that somebody had mentioned this before. Keeping in mind the com- my comments about being the man he needed to be for this this world, mm-hmm. not the man that she thought he was always going to be, even if he was an asshole philanderer. I think even seeing his wife the way that she was, having turned, didn't even have the 
kind of pulled a Morgan, a little extra than Morgan, because Morgan didn't even bother, but he burned the house down rather than having to actually kill her, right? So he still mm -hmm. wasn't the way she wanted him to be. It wasn't until he embraced this, I think, two sides of him, the the saviors, the, the baseball team, the high school baseball team, mm -hmm. you know, that mode of trying to save people, embracing, I couldn't save Lucille, so let me f save Franklin and his daughter. So let me do that. And then the more he gets into it, the more he embraces what he thinks Lucille wants him to be. And I think that comes in stages. I think that comes in layers. It doesn't come all at once. So this is why I, this is why I don't think he was able to put her down. It's like he was still in the middle of it. It's still her. I, I think well, it's almost like not, break, Joe make, not breaking Joe Cocker singing promise. is so sweet. How could he put her down? Yeah. As long as it's like a, a reminder of her, he can't even bear to to do that, to see red. It's like, it's like his kryptonite. It's like, I can't yeah. do it. It's you. I get why he couldn't do it. I just, I just really, I, wa I wanted him to. I just want, I wanted Lucille to be the first kill on the bat. That's all. <laughs> But then it, it then that that wouldn't that the bat not be Lucille? Like this is this is like another paradox. Like if he used Lucille the bat to kill Lucille the person or to put down the walker Lucille, would that bat then be Lucille if Lucille killed Lucille? <laughs> right? Yes, like there's a little Absolutely because now it's drenched in Lucille's blood and it's seeped into her and now his Lucille is forever a part of Lucille cuz she's wood and it's soaked in. <laughs> okay, here's me taking a 50,000 foot view and appre appreciating her comments i get it i do get it what your logic is sound you know your truth you're living it uh that's right <laughs> I think from my point of view, there's like a, it's a it's a little bit paradoxical. I think for as long as that person represents, I don't think he wants to put down that. I think he actually just kind kind of want to wants to keep the living or undead version of Lucille oh, yeah. as Lucille, and I think he wants to transfer that to the bat, not by way of using her blood, because the blood. This is why I'm saying about Lucille give give, give me strength. <laughs> Lucille is the living embodiment, two-handed grip of the man that she said by killing herself he needed to be to survive this world, and he feeds Lucille. That Lucille is alive. <laughs> he feeds Lucille the red he sees in his eyes. You know, like, and so, yeah. and so there is no dead Lucille. <laughs> There's, there's like that archetype that he transfers from Lucille to put in that bat and says that fucker deserved it. <laughs> like so. That so to use that on Lucille, he would never. That's that's what I'm saying. Is like he would never. That would betray her. It's like it's almost like like when you see a mobster movie, they'll have like a wife, but then they'll also have a uh, a girlfriend. Yeah, like a girlfriend, <laughs> right? Yeah, this is the this is the woman I fuck. This is a woman I love. You know, like this is the woman I love. I'm not and never the twain shall meet. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Friday nights are for the wives, Saturdays are for the girlfriends. Exactly. <laughs> what are you what are you talking about with the bat and hitting loose? Oh god damn it. Come on, <laughs> Rachel. Forget about it. <laughs> I get it. I get, no, but I, I, get I, it. I get your logic. I get it and I totally understand <laughs> everything you're saying and it makes absolutely total sense. It was just a it was just a little nugget that I would have liked to see. That's oh honey, all. I, I I I get the cut of your jib. <laughs> yeah. You you just you embrace the macabre. It's macabre. It's what it is yeah. is macabre. It's totally macabre. It's the more blood Nicotero. It's That's the, me. It's yeah. It's the ring gimple. <laughs> it's <laughs> It's, yeah. it's like if you get a call from Gimple, you're dying in seven yeah. days. It's it's that's you. That's, it's that's the effects you're... artist in me. Just wanted to <laughs> yeah. see more blood. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get, I, I, can you imagine how audiences would have reacted to that, though? <sighs> Holy shit. They would have been like, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> they better have their shitting pants on. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. And my version of the story is happening. <laughs> I like well, that he, you brought that. He Can would have been sad about it. Bring this up? I mean, he would have been sad about it. He would have been crying. It would have been oh, devastating for him. Yeah, it would have been devastating for him. But, you know, I don't know. Just That's just my own personal <laughs> Oh, my God. Thing. I, just had this, I just had this thought. Like, you are so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> oh, that's an eyeball. That's an eyeball. I'm doing oh this right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, see? Perfect. Yes. That's how it should have went down. <laughs> I don't know. Per perfect is the right word to use. Perfect but... for me. <laughs> right. We'll go with that. I love it. I'm so glad you said this. This All of this is gold. I don't know. It's not going to oh. fit on a clip, but I'll make it fit. Oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> just you singing. Just you singing you and whacking. Yeah. Boom. Boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> that's the clip right there. <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, oh, it's uh, 
that's so weird. But it was it, sweet, though, wasn't it? It, it was sweet. Th- this, this is why I like karaoke nights, too, by the way. I obviously know how to sing. I think you sort of know how to sing, too, right? <laughs> yeah, you have a good voice. So we, we you know, we muses and, and gods. When we go into the karaoke thing, we kind of just hang back. We kind of want other people to, to, to just wild out, right? Like, even if they're not great, lean in. Just f- have fun. I hate the people that go, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, get on the mic. <laughs> I don't care how you sound. The whole point is to have fun. Guy, you're well, such a drag. I'm never going to invite you to karaoke again, says the person who knows how to sing. Right. On the flip side of that, I'm sure you've been to karaoke nights where you've heard people that you wish would just shut up. Let's distill that to a specific type of person. It's the Drunk. person who... Th- <laughs> yes, but the person who thinks they sound fantastic. It's usually those people. Those people are just oh. get on my nerves. It's when you're kind of like, I don't care how I sound. I'm okay with that. I don't care. I'm yeah. just having fun. I'm leaning in. I'm pointing at people in the crowd. I'm like, oh, I can get behind that. I can get... But the person yeah. who like takes it really seriously and is not and thinks they're good and and really, and then they have the gall to play something that's very long. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's what gets my go every See, time. I don't mind those people because I'm usually sitting in my seat like this. No, oh, I'm so you're talking. Ab- it's the opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind those people that that think they're amazing, but really we're all just looking at each other like, oh my god, oh my god. No, I'm talking about the three drunk chicks falling all over each other who get up and sing sweet caroline that's what i can't stand even i don't mind that (laughs) but this is what will annoy me i don't even know if it's midway into the song it doesn't even have to be because usually it it isn't they'll just stop singing yes they'll just yes that's the thing and then they just walk away and you're like um okay Uh, yes uh, and then you start getting annoyed at the guy he's like dude they left you can stop the song nobody's singing it they're all upset that they didn't bother they just wanted to be on stage for that one second (laughs) aren't we good isn't this fun okay let's (laughs) (laughs) we did it (laughs) and this is could be one person whatever but like then the people that choose a song that they don't even if the words are on the screen (laughs) they just can't (laughs) sing the words that aren't the chorus (laughs) it's like yeah. yeah. You gotta put a little effort. You, you, and, and, but it dovetails. Find the pocket. The, the, right. The, it dovetails. Even if you make up the words, I'm okay with you making up the words. I don't care. That right. That's okay. But if you're like. It'd be funnier. Uh, nah, I worked so hard <laughs> to lose it. All. Right? Like, you know, like looking at the screen or they're looking down like. <laughs> Just waiting. The words are there, buddy. They're, say them uh, wrong. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Sure, and he's like, I'm singing, but you can't hear me. Good. Awesome. Good. See? There you go. Awesome. That's fine. <laughs> There's some effort you gotta put. This is some effort you gotta. When you go up there, perform, perform. This is this is the anal performer part of me. That's like the, the stage is holy. It's it's been it's been blessed. It's been it's been blessed by the the gods. I Treat used it to right. I used to karaoke Aerosmith, and I would bring my own scarf to tie around the microphone stand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was I was that girl. <laughs> Are we soulmates? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that one really you, got away from us. <laughs> <laughs> you're the, you're going to ask me right now, why, uh, did I mind that there was a pre-apocalypse flashback? <laughs> but I, I kind of addressed it already. We, so. we talked about it a little bit. You talked about the necessity of it. And like the pre-apocalypse flashback was to show the origin of the leather jacket. So I it had purpose. Sort of like what I was saying last week. There's a little bit of a parallel mm-hmm. with Rick in, in respect to that. Like, oh. again, showing this stark difference between the two characters. One is a, is a police officer. Officer, sir, you know, serving justice, and like the others, are just a shit bag gym every teacher. man. <laughs> yeah, shit bag every man, gym teacher, which I respect. Again, like I think part of like watching the show is respecting like I the just, journeys. I just remembered two years ago, my high school gym teacher was arrested for public attacks. <laughs> This was way after I graduated, but but I knew I knew him and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, let's go back to the beginning of the episode, can we? Yes, I was going to okay. go there too. Stark contrast from the rest of them, and maybe a lot of TWD episodes. No previously on, yeah. no intro to the character. What did it? What did we see? We saw Maggie taking little Herschel down the street, Herschel Ree, showing him Alexandria at the butt crack of dawn, and Negan is out there. Now, what do you think was meant to be told by introducing the episode that way? That Maggie and Negan are in Alexandria at the same time. Just those two seeing each other was chilly enough but then you throw in the song that they're singing which was you are my sunshine which of mm-hmm. course takes us back to when carl sang it for negan as he's swinging lucille around at the sanctuary this was after carl snuck in the truck followed them there shot a bunch of guys negan made him take his bandage off and show him his eye and then he made yeah. him sing for him yeah and and you know negan heard it because when maggie says good morning to barbara barbara's right there next to negan and maggie does not raise her voice any and barbara can hear her so you know negan hears this song i'm actually kind of wondering because maggie doesn't know that he did that that, no that carl did or maybe he said something about it uh, i don't know anything's possible yeah maybe sing you are my sunshine like come on don't be a pussy bitch you know you didn't (laughs) tell anybody about that but (laughs) right anyway now i said now like i got it in my system i can't stop saying pussy I don't think it was for Negan's benefit. But there's some irony to it. But he, I mean, he would he would remember that. Absolutely, because he loved Carl. And I can see why that would maybe send him down this path of, of thinking back. Well, I think it's also How Maggie did I too. get here, right? Like, right, how did right. I get here? And how did I put my, how do I get in this situation? The very situation of where, like, people are starting to think of me again as this brute. I'm among people who, I'm unhirable, and yet here I am. The, that, that Where he was pre-apocalypse kind of thing. Now yeah. I'm Negan every man again. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. But it's also Maggie. I can see, and this it's there's this weird parallel between Lucille and Maggie. Maggie, the take no shit Maggie that by the way, I had no idea how many people did not like Maggie. Really? I really I really didn't. I really <laughs> did. I'm like ignorant and yet I'm seeing it come out of the woodwork from all our certain segments of our bubble. Oh wow. And I'm like there part of me is like kind of like wanna I wanna defend her. I'm like, bitch, you step in her shoes. <laughs> All that she's been through and then having the capability to lead her people to greatness, you know, even in the face of people being like, yo, this bitch be scary, but you know, our bellies are fed or we're thriving. So I don't have the guts to stand up to her kind of shit. Like you become your end of the enemy that you end up eradicating. Like also <laughs> like seeing her as kind of like a Gregory, like, you know, Ooh. like Ooh. ruling with an iron fist, my way or the highway, you know? Yeah. I mean, not I mean, quite, but yeah. like still, you know how good you have it until, until it's taken away from you. Maggie's not my favorite character, but I don't hate her by any means. I would, I would defend her as a character, but I don't, ag- I definitely don't agree with all her decisions. I mean, she's flawed like the rest of us. Don't get me wrong. Initially when season nine rolled around and we we're talking about taming wild horses and we eventually we started getting into what she had to do to keep hilltop thriving Mm -hmm. i was not about it i was not about it at all i was upset at her going against rick's vision of trying to build coalitions Mm -hmm. and to keep this thing up and have cooperation to keep up the sanctuary and the people and the the saviors and i was like look they followed the wrong guy they backed the wrong horse you know like they shouldn't all have to die and we still don't know what happened to them but then part of me was just kind of like but i get it you got to give each settlement the right to figure out how they want to lead and if and if the a leader decides they don't want to lead the, lead their community to ruin in order to support another part of me is like for that it's like this is the apocalypse still come on people this is mathematics 101 it's like one plus one equals two uh if i give you one my community has less than one so i was just like yeah i get you maggie i get it took me a while but i was just like i tried to understand it because we're rick stan we come out of the box rick stands the box includes batteries it, it, aka us <laughs> liking rick it's not fair yeah but if you take a moment to think about it it's like well yeah i can like rick but i can also appreciate maggie's position you know what and this is the problem and it's good that we're talking about this now because i don't think we've really properly addressed it just like we didn't see carol and the magic King Kingdom, you know, being thriving as it's in a six year long marriage. We also didn't see uh, the time jump from when Negan fell to when we saw him in the cage, all fucked up, like with the big beard and, and somebody cut their hair really badly, like cutting skin. We didn't see that time jump. So we didn't get to see Maggie and, and Hilltop thrive. We didn't get to see all the po- all the politics happening back and forth. We didn't get to see the sanctuary crumble. We didn't get to see the Hilltop thrive. We didn't get to see all the, the hidden angst that Gregory had between she and Matt, he and Maggie. And we also didn't 
didn't get to see her at all for throughout this. It seems like, by the way, 12 years into the apocalypse is pretty accurate. 12, 12 years and seven months. Yeah, that's a long time, isn't it? Which, by the way, lends credence to our theory about April 2008, possibly. Aren't, didn't that? Didn't your tits get a little jiggle from that? Oh, my, babe. <laughs> I did. Seriously. I did give- I did get pretty excited, and it was, um, was it Charity, wasn't it Rebecca Punch? She had said May of 2008 was her timeline, yeah. But it it also proves another theory, by the way. This thing didn't all happen at once. Mm -hmm. This gradually grew over time, not quite exponentially, that at some point it became unmanageable. It actually goes to the nature of the show, because it makes sense that people would ignore it, just like in the radio program, he was saying, like, the attackers or the criminals uh would bite the bite the flesh of their victims you know like and so it's just like <laughs> yeah no bitch zombies roam the earth so like <laughs> it would make sense that they would just ignore it and, and ignore it and ignore it until like it was staring them at the face and then eating you your face i mean we, we were all like oh it's 10 years it's 10 years i'm like well 10 years might have been like after baby coco was born and then some like now we're mm-hmm. in a brave new world i was saying maybe 11 years well, I think 12 years and seven months. I would say when we when we jumped ahead six years, that put us at 10 years from the time jump to the point we are now has been another two years. Well, I was I was guessing the time jump put us at nine years because okay. then you had from from that point until the Pikes, you had another several months, I want to say, because when was Coco born? <sighs> After the Pikes, right? I have to assume because there was yes. another big time jump from then. Yes. Okay. It was after the Pikes. Now, see, you know, I all of my timelines are based on Judith. Yeah, I know, partially. Yeah, at least yeah. from my end. Yeah. So when I when we did the time jump, I had to to guesstimate that, and I guessed Judith was about about ten, about nine or ten years old after that time jump. So if you take into account all of Lori's pregnancy, then giving birth, then before the baby turns a year old, it would I, it I, would time out. The key thing to helping this out is ha- knowing how. How long Rick was in the hospital, even after the the fall happened, mm-hmm. uh, and I think it was about two months. Yeah, I was going to say eight weeks. Yeah, and I think the time he wakes up is exactly when I think. Well, not like exactly when technically Fear the Walking Dead starts a little bit. I think maybe even when he goes into the hospital, I think is is when it starts. We could get stuck here all day, but it's just fa- it's <laughs> fascinating lines. to note. It's <laughs> fascinating to note how going from thinking like oh ten years and seven months, maybe eleven year eleven years and three months or something like no, it's twelve years and seven months, buddy. <laughs> maybe six yeah. whatever i don't know whatever the span of time is from the time the jacket thing happened to when she got her diagnosis because there there might have been some time between that i think and well, i think it was and he was he oh. was out and about searching for medicine for six weeks so that's another month Ugh. right there and a half yeah. and a half oh, yeah that's another month and a half there god that's rough man and i was <laughs> thinking about that think about that passage of time oh, it's so rough Finding the medicine to, and then being held captive for like two, three days. Ugh. Yeah. And who knows how long he was in, in the storage closet for. And then you can see why he would come back, not only to save these people that he oh, just, I'd, you know, ratted out. I'd have killed all, like, them, all those guys. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm sure like there's a part of him that's saying, but maybe between those two, three days, that's when she decided to do it. Oh, yeah. I don't if he would have been there then. But then that would have been just him also saying, nah, man. Nah. It, it would be the, the alternative to him actually saying, no, nah, she did this as soon as I left. But he's in denial. Mm-hmm. Like, so <laughs> you see like, people do this all the time. Like, instead of blaming themselves, they get neurotic and they blame the world. Rather than putting this shit on yourself and saying, I should have never left her. I should have never left her. I, I should have heard her voice when she was saying, stay. I should have known that that's what it meant. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here because yeah. you need to be the man I want you to be. Anyways, <laughs> the, the, the man that needs to be the man in the apocalypse should have stayed. This is the weird irony. Her saying, if he would have stayed, let's play that game. If he would have stayed with her and been with her in the end, I, I don't think he would have been that man. I don't know that he would have. Let's play this game, though. Could he have been mm-hmm. a better man? Could he have been something more akin to a Rick? Would he have just offed himself without her? What, let's play that. Yeah, this is this can go a lot of ways, right? If he had stayed with her and she succumbed to cancer, I think he would have blamed himself maybe even For more. For not saving her? Yeah. And now but he's then, oh, surviving with this guilt. But maybe that guilt could have transformed, too. Could have. Maybe not to rage. I think he would have died eventually 
anyway, but I think he would have died trying to save others. Let's just say, let's just say, because it seems like he was a good guy. It, this is like the classic uh, good intentions kind of scenario. Like, okay, good intentions can get you only so far. It doesn't give you that extra thing that you need to survive the zombie apocalypse. Say if Glenn didn't have others, you know, would have Glenn have survived? Maybe for a while until he met like a governor or like, or Shane even on his own. <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> but yeah. then, did you have the stones to 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 live in this world? I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But my suspicions and my experience say you need that little extra, or at least a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to play this out because had he stayed, he would have been the man that he all she always wanted him to be, but not the man he needed to be. So I think maybe in a way she knew he was going to go anyway. Also, so mm, maybe this is like the opportunity to kind of make him the man he was going to be to survive. I'm not going to stick to my guns on this series. I just think it's nice to play with, though, because it's like yeah. all of these things coming together make this all happen. And had Negan not happened, Judith wouldn't have been saved and in the storm. And the, we play this game all the time. It's like, what if Negan wasn't in the picture? Well, they wouldn't have survived the Whisper onslaught. I mean, there's a lot of things that would have been survivable had Negan not been in the picture. Again, you go through a lot of shit to do it, but... Mm. Anything's possible. Did you happen to notice what book Negan was reading to Lucille? Oh, was it Pride and Prejudice? It was Pride and Prejudice. Well, Talking Dead talked about that. Oh, I didn't watch Talking Dead. Oh, you should have, because they gave us a chock full of oh. fucking Easter eggs. <laughs> uh, I just did notes right right before I got on here. <laughs> well, the, like the right ri- the writer of this episode, David Leslie Johnson uh, McGoldrick, written by David Leslie Go- uh, Johnson. He was the actual person on the radio announcing the victim, the 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 attackers eat the, bite the flesh of of its victims, and and that was actually a, a bite off of a sound bite. He was like <laughs> cited. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, what they say on the radio. Quoting? Yeah. Are you trying to Citing say quoting? This, well, I mean, now it's, yes. Quoting, yes. The, okay. Using the same words as that as that radio announcer. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. I just see no value in going into all this stuff because it's, here people, watch Talking Dead. And if you don't know, if you don't watch Talking Dead, we'll put it in the blog or something. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't usually know do. I just missed this one was all. I didn't know. I didn't realize they talked about Pride and Prejudice. I was all excited because Sharon and I Googled the character names and figured it out. Oh no, <laughs> you guys need to watch Talking Dead. Well, part of what is funny about the version of Pride and Prejudice that he's reading it's pride and prejudice and zombies it's not pride and prejudice okay i didn't say this at the time but i was gonna tell well i told charity i've never read pride and prejudice so i'm not familiar with it i didn't know it. i'm like the only pride and prejudice i know is pride and prejudice and zombies <laughs> that, which i think he had a that's hand funny. in if i'm not mistaken but that's oh, that's, that's the funny. one that's that's what he's reading and yeah. that's what makes it even funnier when he goes i i can't read this this is just awful <laughs> It's just awful. I love that he calls her mama. Mama, this shit sucks. He's just like, oh, oh. Yeah. It was great that they had D- David Leslie Johnson McGolrick on Talking Dead because he was able to give you all these, even the biker gang's uh, outfit name, Valex Vipers, V-A-L-A-K-S. Oh, and of course, Lucille's wearing the Half Moon shirt. When? I think near the beginning. No, I can't say I paid attention to her her shirts. I was more, I was distracted by her hair. <laughs> I'll have to go back and, and look for that. I did not notice the Half Moon t-shirt. Watch Talking Dead! <laughs> <laughs> I do want to just just go through this one because now it's like the thorn in my side. Are you talking about the other project with the Balance Vipers? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. It has its own wiki article in the Walking Dead wiki. <laughs> Daleks Vipers are a group of hostile survivors introduced in season 10 of AMC's The Walking Dead. They're a motorcycle gang led by Craven. They served as the primary antagonistic group of the episode Here's Negan. They're from Ohio originally. Nothing is known about the Valix Vipers prior to the outbreak again other than this motorcycle gang that was either based in or had a chapter in Ohio. Again, I think they are in Virginia, obviously from the license plate from Lucille, but they originate from Ohio. Valix Vipers are named after the demon Valak, who is the main antagonist of The Conjuring 2, which David Leslie worked on. I just needed to get it right. Oh, you you spoke about Barbara earlier. Did you know that Barbara is literally one of the only original members of Alexandria left? I cannot say I remember Barbara, and now I feel bad. Now you're making me feel bad that I don't remember Barbara. It's okay. <laughs> you and me only came online when we're like, oh, where's Birdie? Where's, yeah. where's, where's Marisol? Where's Beatrice? Like, we, where's Beatrice? Scott? <laughs> 
You're talking about like <laughs> exactly, yeah. Who is another original Alexandrian resident? Yeah. But like, we didn't kind of come online into the background. I'm just speaking for both of us here. <laughs> I didn't come online with the background actor scene until we really started doing this sort of thing more often. That's better true. Often. That's true. Like we were like, oh, Oscar. What was his name? Oscar. Um. Oh God, I can't remember his name now. <laughs> remember the guy that played Oscar on the TV on as a as the background character? I can see him in my head. I know exactly who you're talking about. He might have gotten taken down in Morningstar, just like William Bell and like Marco and but Marco was more heralded, I think. It was this weird he got this weird um fanfare before season nine came out. Like the like the actor who plays Marco. Gustavo Gomez. For some <laughs> reason he got he got some hype. Like a lot of hype into season I and then like nothing <laughs> probably, happened. With... Probably from Do me. You, re- you remember what I'm talking about, right? No, yeah. no, this is from like media. Oh. Um, I read like, shit. I don't read like, your thing to get news. <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> no. Otherwise I would have known. Oh, he's very important. <laughs> I'm always asking, where's Marco? Where's Marco? Polo. Right. <laughs> it's a requirement. I have to say it. So, okay, we got Barbara out of the way. Cool. And she speaks. Great. Awesome. She took care of Judith in her in her infancy. That's another role. Something to remember. This is how important oh. Barbara is to surviving. If, Bar- if Barbara dies, it's almost symbolic of old Alexandra dying, which is why she's still alive, probably. But love this line. Negan Smith needed Negan at this time. Maybe one of the only times a character on The Walking Dead didn't turn out the way he was meant to be. Maybe the only other time is Rick. But let's get into this because the example is in the cabin right before they go into the flashback he's talking to his shitbag self like the, not the shitbag that the the negan that sees red and he says you're a cult of personality with no cult you needed to be this guy you're a fucking clown i wish i, I could have been a version that could survive this world without you he sees it because we need to go into the into the greater reason why he finally puts lucille to rest first of all why he finds her to, in the first place because i think he's a man adrift again <laughs> He's having a midlife crisis post-apocalypse now, and he's trying to find his version of a leather jacket, which is Lucille (laughs) the Bat. I don't blame him for doing this. I don't think it's going to be for the the same reason that we might suspect it might be. He's like, oh, Negan be (laughs) Neganing. No, he's just having an identity crisis. I've said this about Carol before, too. Like When you go on this vengeance vengeance quest, let's say, and you just knock, knock down stone soup and rats and peel away drywall and just to get at alpha or i mean the rat what now who do you who do you become now after all this you need to find out carve out what that person looks like this is a lot a lot of what i say about people who are have this kind of like activist agenda activism all the time kind of thing what happens when you get whatever it is you're seeking what now find the next thing Mm -hmm. do what what do you do with your life when you're done or is this something that just has this anger has to be this anger at whatever it is going to be be it this cause be it that cause what happens at the end of that we've achieved world peace no we have to find the next thing <laughs> so this is what this is kind of what negan's going through he's like okay the whisperers are dead i'm carving a path in alexandra and then now i'm reaching a roadblock with maggie but even still maggie's an excuse it doesn't help matters but it's kind of an excuse i don't think he knows who he is you could mm. say maggie's the thing that's not letting him be the alexandrian he wants to be but that's not true i feel I like think so i feel like by the end of this episode he does remember exactly who he is i still felt like i had to keep one eye on him i don't i still don't trust him and that smirk you called it a smile earlier but i saw a smirk towards maggie and what i heard him thinking (laughs) i heard his thoughts out loud and he said try it try and kill me (laughs) this is why i say you should watch talking dead because there were many takes of that last scene looking at maggie mm. one, one was intense one mm-hmm. was this one was that they happened to chose the one of like seven takes probably <laughs> the one where he's smirking at maggie otherwise there's no clear direction of how he's supposed to look at maggie or maggie's okay. supposed to look at him so he kind of chose that as one of the takes and they, that's the take they chose which does give the scene a little bit more context because i always think these guys love open-ended things like what do you think that means well i don't think it means what you think it means mm-hmm. and i think we kind of wrote it that way so we even we have to figure it out by the end of it so 
But I, I, I choose to think that actually it is this hybrid version of being the man that he was with Lucille when she was alive and being the man that Lucille want, needed him or wanted him desperately to be without her being alive. Yeah. And I think part of what that is, is saying to himself, instead of, I'm not going to walk on eggshells anymore. I know what I brought to the table when I say, I didn't, I know I didn't do it the way you would have done it. <laughs> I know I didn't save the world the way you would have done it. It's kind of like Carol. Let's just be honest. I'm not going to apologize. For, for saving your asses. I'm not going to apologize for doing the right thing. What, what do I have to apologize for? I, I, I saved lives. I love Judith. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. I saved Judith. I'm going to do it again and again, and you're not going to stop me. You can be uncomfortable all you want. You just have to deal with it. I'm not going to get in your face about it, but I'm not going to just walk all over eggshells. I know what value I have. I know the man I want to become, at least. I don't know if I'm there yet. Let's just be real here. Negan doesn't know who he is still, but at least he has a better idea of like i'm putting this bat to rest because i don't need to see red to know what it takes to live in this fucking apocalypse i think there's that part of it beyond that i don't think even he knows what that means i don't think even he knows what that takes yeah. but i do know that he's done apologizing he's still going to build houses he's still going to do this he's still, but he's not going to shy away he's going to be like hey bitch what's up he's 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 like deal with it yeah. I don't, you don't have to forgive me you know but you have to live with me yeah. i belong here it's like daryl when he says i know where i belong carol yeah. what about I don't, you i don't know if i'm ready to say that negan won't see red again or or even that he doesn't want to be that guy i think negan is content knowing that he could be that guy anytime he needed to be i don't i'm not comfortable yet saying what he wants about anything I, i'm gonna say this <laughs> i feel you i feel feel you because no. in the back of my mind always Negan be Negan right fine whatever. oh yeah because I have to keep that in mind that's Angel Kang right there that's, that's <laughs> my it's my medulla oblongata <laughs> but like narratively speaking on the written word page he says to himself you're a clown you're a cult of personality without a cult as of now you're a fucking joke the fact that I had to be you to survive this thing makes me sick makes me sick it's not what my wife would have wanted she wanted to be, be tough she didn't want to be this guy not only was I that i was the guy that cheated on her and not only did that i cheated on her like i don't know how many wives i had <laughs> like i had so many wives that this is what i'm saying though this is what i'm saying is that he took that seeing red and took it further he said one wife nine wives fine i make up the rules as i go along as long as everybody's in fucking line i'm the person that le steers the ship and don't you get any fucking ideas even if i smell that there might be an idea that you think you want to live without me no you don't get to live without me i'm gonna make you depend on me this is how this ship runs that's not a loving relationship that's not a marriage with lucille but he embraced that part of him to be the man he needed to be to survive this apocalypse. It's almost resentful of Lu Lucille too. I am everything that you wanted me to be, right? Lucille, give me strength. <laughs> and yet there's like a resentfulness. Like it does give context to his actions. It's like it's almost resentful. Like she took the easy way out. Fuck you. I was trying to keep you alive. Mm. And so like, okay, fuck you. This is how I'm going to live my life now. Fuck you, Lucille. You want to be strong? Here, taste some blood. Taste some blood, Lucille. There's a little sick kind of like, you, you know how some people get that way? Like, oh, I fooled you. You know when you get to your parents or like you sneak out in the middle of the night, like when you're not supposed to? Sure. Know, plenty of times. Sorry, But there's mom. a certain satisfaction. <laughs> you get back home, right? You get back home and you're like, fucking did that. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> I beat you. I beat you. And you'll do it again and again. You'll double down. You'll double down until you finally get caught. But like still, you'll keep going. Keep <laughs> going until you get caught. I... I snuck out more from my friends' houses than I did my own. I could probably count on one hand how many times I snuck out of my own house. But going to your friend's house made it that much easier to do it, right? Because you oh, weren't yeah. in the vicinity. Because my mom wasn't there. <laughs> right. And you know what? You do that because you're like... Fuck you in your rules. Like fuck this shit. What are you gonna do at at, at no, midnight on a auto set? What are you gonna do at midnight outside your house? Nothing. We did nothing. Yeah. It was yeah. just to be out. <laughs> it was just to be defiant. It was just to be fuck you. Yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. that's that's Negan in a nutshell. I, I there's no world in which I don't think there's context to everything that he does. There's that resentfulness. How dare you leave me after me trying mm. to save you? How dare you? Fuck you then. I'm gonna get five million wives. 
and I'm going <laughs> to treat them like shit. And that's the, that's the irony is that I'm not I'm I'm going to get these wives. I don't even know if he's been with them to be honest, like in the show. Yeah. I don't know about the comic book, but whatever. I don't know shit about the comic book. I don't have to, I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> you don't need to. It, do, it but doesn't like, just, matter. Yeah. Just imagine Sherry, right? Just imagine Sherry. Like he keeps us around. He doesn't fuck us. Like he just he just wants to own us, right? Like he just wants us as property, just so that I, nobody touches us. And I could see that now having this backstory, I could see that version of Negan too, because like you said, it, 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 you don't need to know his backstory of the comics because it is different. It is very very different because things happened on the show the way they did we have a different negan than the one from the comic books absolutely but it's definitely like a negan that makes more sense 100 percent. you can understand that negan negan was a good man that made one too many mistakes and lost himself along the way pre-apocalypse instead of being the man he was meant to be he leaned into his mistakes he had multiple wives that he didn't care for and that their original husbands never would so like he's almost making the husbands be like him mm -hmm. because because now you can't treat your woman right right now you, i'm making you into a me you know so i am negan he rewarded the strong and took from the weak in exchange for safety the loss of his wife made him a savior but the kind we deserved rather than what we wanted oh i'm gonna do whatever i want you'll be safe but i'm this is my playground and all because my wife fucking left me before i, I wanted her to that's sort of, it it makes so much more sense now but what i was going to say about negan and this kind of ties it all in a bow the name negan is like the end name of a gaelic surname let's say so like there's finnegan dunnegan nigan ne mm -hmm. negan what does negan mean one so it's like the bright one oh the, i see the dark mm -hmm. one so negan is one i am negan we are negan we are or one. i am negan we are one mm -hmm. and that isn't that nuts yeah which makes sense why he dropped the smith it's like negan smith oh okay that doesn't make no sense yeah that was that was the everyman i'm not the everyman i'm the one now i'm prince <laughs> right yeah i'm just negan i'm seal <laughs> <laughs> I'm David. No, I'm, I'm just David. I'm Cher. <laughs> I'm Sharon D. That actually makes sense, actually. I'm Madonna. <laughs> I got excited because I remembered the last thing that I have on my list to bring up. Lindsley. Lindsay Register, right. So excited to see Lindsay. The origin of Laura. I like that she had like more of a backstory that we could sink our teeth into too. It's like that's her dad, technically. Yeah. I also um like that she she had the tattoo on her neck already too. That wasn't something yeah. that happened after she I got like with that, Negan. Too. Yeah. I right, thought that was cool. Right. She had ma she had made sure I remember this from like one of the first interviews I've ever heard with her. Um, this was on Jamie, you know Jamie J A M I. Um, Heart still beating. That's the first interview I, I heard of with Laura, and one of the things she said was she made it a concerted effort for that tattoo to be something from her past, like pre apocalypse, oh. part of her upbringing. So it's fitting, and I'm glad they continued the continuity on that. That yeah. that was something from before. You're supposed to see that tattoo, and then she had a string of interviews after that with a bunch of other people, but that was the first one. She she, oh, cool. she had nailed the first interview and it's a awesome. really good one you should definitely listen to it there's something cool about these people that she meets and then obviously there's an inference that like he comes back and laura is basically one of the founding people uh, of the sanctuary she gave him the bat obviously this takes the place of dwight's part of the story i i know that specifically in the comic books the inspiration of Daryl. <laughs> it's, it's like this Dwight character from this here. Here's Negan. And they meet up in the woods and da Dwight has the crossbow. Dwight looks literally kind of like Daryl. But what's fitting about that is I know that they meant to get, they meant to get Austin Milio, but he was too busy filming Fear the Walking Dead. Aww. And they, and the, but they said to themselves, Hey, let's bring this character back and give her more of a rich story. And, and I think, mm -hmm. I think that was a good move to be honest. And somebody actually said this, I think on Talking Dead is like, if we had brought, to wipe back for that scene i felt like it would have taken away from negan's story they would break out of focusing on that being negan's story and saying oh mm. well there's dwight's origin too oh well, yeah it's like if we would have seen simon right okay it would have yeah. broken us a little bit out of it and be like oh, well the focus is now being taken away from, just kind of like fear the walking dead uh episode 608 breaking the focus away from this entire episode laura a little bit more low-key our eyes light up but we don't know as much as we'd like about her to be like oh but no, we're like, oh, yeah, again, she's back. Mm -hmm. Like fighting Beta that one time. Yeah, okay. but it's cool. It's cool when we right. recognize somebody. It makes sense why Laura is so loyal 
to Negan too. And even revered by Negan. And not a wife. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Could you imagine? Right. That would have been too much. Too weird, given the Although, backstory. Let's think about that for a little bit though. If things have gone had gone a little differently, like maybe he would have stayed. I don't I don't know. It, they couldn't have gone differently. There was no reason for him to meet up with the mobile unit if he would have stayed with Lucille until right. the end. Because I was thinking to myself, like, oh, but yeah, like if anybody at all, why not her? Because that would have allowed him to find his way back and still maybe be this kind of yeah. badass, but didn't have to see red, didn't have to have all the wives, didn't have to run things by brute force for the sake of safety to keep people in line. I don't know, but that is something to maybe chew on. Also, she's a lot stranger things have happened, but like seems a little young for a man like Negan. Like I'm talking about 20 years, his junior. 20 years is not unheard of. No, right. <laughs> but yes, mm, I'm thinking like at the time he was probably in his 40s. When they meet, and, yeah, and then, mm -hmm. and then ten to twelve years later, he's in his fifties. That that jives, right? Yeah, and I think she so. is in her early twenties. My cousin got married when she was twenty six, and her husband was forty nine. Woo! <laughs> Double her age, almost. So. A love knows no age. <laughs> no, no, you knew what you wanted to say. You were you were gonna say age ain't nothing but a number. Mm -mm. <laughs> Look, obviously there are exceptions. I'm like eight years apart from my wife. Now I'm gonna get canceled again. Whatever. And Fuck you guys. <laughs> and they're still and they're still together, and they have five sons. So it works. Oh, wow. It works, people. <laughs> wow. Going back to the point, uh, yeah. Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, he um. I thought that could be something interesting, like even like especially over time, let's say. If they started up a thing, I would want it to be like just the two of them. I wouldn't want Laura to be one of the wives. I would want her to be right. the wife. Yeah. And that would make sense, like yeah. especially being the person, this good person with a good dad trying mm -hmm. to do good things. It could have been it, right? It could have been. It's good to mention this out loud because I I said this to Kirsten Acuna when she was reflecting on like like on this on this episode, not but di not directly, but just mentioning that like oh this is the last of twenty two episodes of season ten. Mm. It's like and just thinking about it being this far into the Walking Dead main show, and it's like oh knowing that the next season is going to be the last one. She was just reflecting, and I was like, isn't it wild? Like I said, isn't it wild that like we got all this show and we were able to be lucky to have these bonus episodes and and thinking about so many different things that we may have looked at one way when it started and then we look back on it and we look a little, a little bit differently let's say at andrea or even at Lori or dale even like we love dale but then like by the end of it we're like i get why he wasn't meant to be here i get i totally get it i get why he was there because it makes us feel certain things it makes <laughs> us want to hold on right i know i hated we have to say dale <laughs> I, I love Dale. But see, I hated Andrea. <laughs> I so, and you probably had it the opposite, right? Nope, I hated like, Andrea too. Oh, okay. I was glad, you had I was Fuck both glad when they people. both died. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Certain people are like shooting stars. They're here for a little while and they burn brightly in your heart. But even <laughs> even after they burn brightly, you remember them differently. Like you remember these people differently. Like, oh, yeah. Like, it, it makes you sad. But like at the same time, you're like, I get it. I get it. He wasn't meant for this world. Like she wasn't meant for this. World. Even though she had the right idea, she wasn't meant for this world. Shane had the somewhat of a right idea, but didn't go about it the right way. He the, the person yeah. that he he was meant to be was kind of a dangerous person, to be honest. I think sh Shane would have been perfectly fine if Rick didn't come back <laughs> i i think shane would have been perfectly fine had he not loved carl like to be honest oh, if he God. if he could detach from carl he could be something else in this world like he could be this incredible person and i think it's kind of cool that carl was there in this world you know and then yeah. obviously with carl though comes the rick baggage so you can't be who you want to be or who you're meant to be shane it's too bad you had that humanity sure. That piece that drag you down like an anchor, man. You thought you we thought you were a psychopath, but at the same time, you did have a heart. And that's what got you killed, really. Carl got you killed. Why do I say this? Because I had this interesting idea about the what if. Tales of the Walking Dead could be not only little anthology tales or little random tales, like people we don't even know. Just random tales from the apocalypse that are these self-contained narrative stories. Like the Althea tapes. Yeah, I was gonna, well, I was gonna say like the Twilight Zone more to the point. Like the Althea tapes are taken from this one narrow setting that doesn't move, but like Tales of the Walking Dead could be this like Twilight Zone-esque episode where you get the breadth and feeling of an entire story, but like in 40 minutes, you know? And it's all done by the end of it. But it could be something where one episode every season let's say you would get a what if episode and the shame about that being is that we kind of got that with michonne and there's a danger of people going like, oh but like are we gonna do this it's a shame because you want it right you want that what if episode that that journey of like what if negan had you know married laura let's say <laughs> how would that have turned out 
in the greater context. How would how would that happen though? Are you saying like to just put out an episode as if it did happen or would this be like a vision like Michonne had within another episode? I how- would say full on butterfly effect. Oh like, man. Instead of it instead of the the Michonne Jimson weed trip, right? <laughs> where it was a a tiny thing in a greater thing. No, this would be the thing. That would be the entire episode. The whole thing. So oh. it technically so you'd have one of these a year and it might even be the season ender every year. Or so, mid-season let's say so basically you want fan fiction episodes yeah but with a basis in reality not like uh, bring back madison like no but you'd have to <laughs> what would be the well, thing that would what if that would madison, madison didn't sacrifice herself i mean that could right, be a, right. a what if what if she did something differently and in fact like i think what would be great about these what if episodes is showing the audience how had these things not happened so many other things would have gone terribly wrong that's what these what ifs episodes should show the audience. Yeah. Like, you need a fucking reminder. You need have to get the, bitch slapped. Have the eleven twenty two sixty three effect. Oh yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why. That's what I mean by butterfly effect, right? Yeah. Which, yep. by the way, I bawled. Ball. Like, <laughs> we're talking about the last time. If I'm being honest, the last time I remember bawling to anything other than last night. <laughs> Yeah. Was to eleven twenty two sixty three. That end Aww. scene had yeah. me in tears, like uncontrollable tears. That made me feel because I felt like I was on a journey with this guy. I felt so many things. Now I want to watch it again, but I don't want to watch it again. That you know that feeling where you're like, I want to watch that again, but I'm like, no, I don't want to watch that again. That's painful. I, th- I think Sharon D knows that feeling. <laughs> I think we all know that feeling. We all <laughs> know that feeling. Now I just want to know where Franklin is. Oh, he did. <laughs> There's no way he's not dead. People like that don't survive. He's a doctor. Of course he's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good point. Oh, Good point. <laughs> can I, Forgot can he I was just a doctor. Say, by the way, in Charity says hashtag Legan, like Laura, Le- Laura Legan. Aw, Legan. I half wanted to like post. I didn't, because this sounds a little controversial. I wanted to post like a, a mock up of a COVID vaccine vaccination card, but I wanted to put doctors Carson and Carson <laughs> <laughs> and then put like the dates of like. <laughs> When each one of them died, <laughs> just pretend dates be the vaccination dates. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they put like Squawking Dead as the name. <laughs> Part of me is like, yeah, sounds good in theory. I don't think it's going to go well with the audience <laughs> when I actually post it. Oh my gosh. I think uh, it'd be and then funny. I write, I write in the caption, got vaccinated. Wait, if we're going to talk about The Walking Dead. Am I just going to regurgitate the stuff that somebody said on Talking Dead? No. No. Am, am I going right. to cite? Am, I may cite something that Renee Hansen says about music uh, or like an analysis on music lyrics. That's cool. That's not something you're going to get from Talking Dead. Yep. I'm going to go into character depth. I'm going to go into like interesting, like reading even further into the into the writing, like what we said about Negan and what Lucille thought she had to do to get him to be the man he should be in the apocalypse. Things like that. That means so much to me. That has so much value. I want to give you something that you're not going to get any, anywhere else. I want to give you something that, you, that you're going to walk away with and say, I didn't think of that before. You know, so when I post online, it better reflect that. Yeah. The clips that I post, it's either going to make you laugh or it's going to make you think. I'm not wasting your time. You better put on notifications because you're going to get one a day, <laughs> maybe, if that. By the end of the week, you'll probably get maybe three a day because <laughs> that's when we post our episodes slash clips slash blogs and they'll have some value to it. And you'll click on them and you'll be like, Oh gosh, I should have followed Squawking Dead three years ago. Yeah, you should have, you fuck face. <laughs> where you been? <laughs> yeah, where you been, you pieces of shit? <laughs> like, I hate... <laughs> so, so resentful. aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And this must be part of... This must be part of the problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm finally opening up. This is—I think this is what people want, right? 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 That's what makes—that's right? what makes good TV. <laughs> I, I, other than the leather jacket and the happy days, which we didn't say out loud, and you know, we said in the pre-show, but like the happy days <laughs> shit, it's true. No, you can't say anything after that. Like yeah. being the fonds. Hey. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I wrote this down, but it's not even a big deal. But like, Lucille has a Colt firearm. I thought that was kind of interesting. You can actually make out, you can make out the model and everything like that. Mm. It's, it's just an interesting Rick parallel, Mm -hmm. like how we had the Python, but what's, what's more important, but this is what led me to thinking what I thought of about Lucille and what she felt like she had to do. You're thinking to yourself, why doesn't she shoot him? So in a way, like why even bring the gun to the table in the first place? Well, I had a lot more going on in my head than just, just that. When I saw she had the gun in one hand, the information on the other side of her. 
And in that moment, she was deciding which, she, which hand she was going to use. Now, at first, maybe this is just the sick part of my twisted brain. I thought she would shoot herself in front of him. Oh, that is interesting. Now, wait, let's follow this logic because I think you and me have the same conclusion. Why doesn't she? Because she would rather watch him suffer. That's what I thought, mm -hmm. too. Like, she's sitting here wondering which would hurt him more. Mm -hmm. Which would give me more satisfaction. To keep him alive. And then in the end, I love when I get to say this. Because mm -hmm. it, even in this scenario, because it's, you wouldn't think. It doesn't go the way she thinks it, was, it will. She thinks he's going to suffer and blah, blah, blah. And no, he shows up instead. This is like her own little version of the apocalypse. He becomes the man he's meant to be. Blah, 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 for her. For her, not yeah. For, not for the apocalypse not for what the world is i thought that's kind of cool that's his version of the walking dead right there because you think the zombie apocalypse it's over for him no he shows up but i was thinking the same thing oh this is going to make him hurt so much more and make me feel a lot better and in the end what do we find out though we find out that he doesn't even tell her until they're in this moment where he has to get the drugs and then he finally starts to tell her and then she goes no 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 this is why i think you need to give up because I know that you cheated on me. Like he didn't tell her until just then. I had assumed on first watch that like, oh, he to she told he told her already. And because he was saying, I wait, I lie awake at night thinking, how how did I get to be so lucky that you stuck around with me? And then I realized upon watching again, oh, he means because he was such a loser. Like you you paid for my bills and all that stuff. You did you did all this for me, and and yet you still stuck around with me, even though I didn't come back, I didn't take you home from the doctor's office. No 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 no. She knew about that, and it's like, but no 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 honey, you don't understand. I was ready to cut you out, but I, I knew, I just knew you were the man. I took a chance on you. And, and of course, I'm still thinking like she chose the thing to make him suffer. But like at the same time, it's like, but what if, what if, what if he shows up? Not everybody gets that. No, not everybody gets that, that, that last chance and it ends up working out. And sometimes it does. It's like that speech that Morgan gives. Like I've been, I've been, you know, sometimes people change maybe a couple times in their lives. You know, people make that change, you know, the change that they've been meaning to make. But I've been, thir I've been, 16 different somebodies you know like i've made that change 16 different times you know and i and i keep doing it and so this is one of those times that change you know that, that that life somehow brings you or death upon them finally having this confession period she says you made up for it and i thought that was kind of an interesting pair of words when you think about okay let's bring it back to maggie this is what gives him the ammunition to say i showed up i did the things i saved people's lives i stopped the whisperers i don't have to pretend to be in the show like i know what i did there's no making two bits about it. I know what I did. I don't expect you to forgive me. I don't I don't expect you at all to forgive me. But I'm not going to sit here and say, I didn't do anything. I'm not going to cower in fear. I'm not going to pretend like I'm nobody. I'm not going to blend in the background. I am who I am. I may not be the guy I used to be, but I am who I am. I have to own up to everything. I'm taking responsibility, like Carol, I'm taking responsibility <laughs> for everything that I've done. I'm going to make that commitment to, that, to saying, I'm not going to do it again, but I know what I did. I can't run away from that. There's no way. And with you around, there's no way I can get away with it, you know, <laughs> like if I, even if I try. I just thought that's a good juxtaposition to have to this very moment. You made up for it. And then he gets to bury her, finally, in the embers, burying it in a shroud. You know what? We'd always dreamt of this moment. We always wondered what would happen if he got Lucille again. And part of me is doing backflips right now. First of all, I never thought that he would actually find it. I really, I really didn't. I, re I, re I always thought that, okay, he's going to keep his promise. And in a way, he did. He's going to keep his promise to Judith. He's not going to get people hurt anymore. Now, we, I know that he did not do that. Obviously, he killed a lot of people. Got a lot of people killed in the process. Kind of mm -hmm. like Carol. Let's say again, who knows Carol better than Negan right now? Or Negan knows better. Who, who, knows, who knows each other better than oh, Negan and Carol? Obviously. Yeah. yeah, they did the things. But they're both taking responsibility for those things. Or they're both at least trying to. This, all the successes, mm -hmm. all the losses. We love Carol. The, again, she comes in the box you know, with batteries, you know, like we, that's <laughs> how we know her. We love her. So it's a little harder to accept Negan for everything that he is, not just the fucking crazy murderer person that we know. But like also the person who saved people's lives. Um, so with that, everybody, thank you for joining us on this Here's Negan special. I'm your host, David Cameo, joined by Cosmom09 and briefly joined by Alania. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. And Sharon in the chat. Hi. Hi. Oh, actually, she's this way. I have to remember that. She's this Hi. way in the regular show. 
<laughs> if you like what you heard on audio, head over to ratethispodcast.com slash squawking dead. Five stars in eggplant in any venue of your choice, maybe all of them. There's nothing really stopping you. You don't have to be listening on Spotify to rate us in Spotify. Five. There's no login required, I don't think at least. Maybe there is. I have no idea. But create one. What the hell's <laughs> wrong with you? Also, try to use it as a communications device. Tell us why you love us so that other people can know to listen also. I mean, if you love us, share that love. I mean, we would share your love. We do it all the time. We give people shout outs on this podcast. We put them in the blogs. We put reference links and everything so that people can follow you too. So just do the same for us, okay? You don't have to create a blog, but just rate us in the in the reviews and let us know that you have so that we know to look out for it. And if you really, really like us, head over to ko-fi.com slash squawking dead. ko-fi.com slash squawking dead. Just follow us there, create an account. It'll let you know when we have an interview coming up and you can be a part of the live audience and ask a question during that interview. We've interviewed Alex and Eisenson. He didn't join us in the Peggy Shot interview and you bit yourself in the ass when you when you didn't join us in the Alexa Nicenson interview. <laughs> when are you going to cop on and just follow us on ko-fi.com slash squawking dead? I can't make you do it. But if you like it and you want to join in on some of the fun, whether it's recording an episode, whether it's joining an interview and being a part of the live audience, buy us a coffee. It'll last you 30 days. It'll give you 30 days of supporter back content. If you subscribe to a coffee a month, the party just keeps on rolling. You'll continue to have access to perks to be able to download the unedited episodes to be in our weekly Wednesday, maybe Thursday, who knows, Jackbox games. <laughs> of course, many new perks to come as coffee.com is going to be having tears soon, which means my job is going to be a lot harder because I'm going to be giving you lots of free shit. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> lots of free shit are coming your way if, if tears comes out because you commit to three coffees a month, you get free shit every month, let's say. Again, I'm not saying to buy us a coffee. I'm just saying just follow us so you know what's going on so that when something comes out that you might be interested in joining us or listening to like an unedited episode where we talked about you know in the last one where Alexa was going to be a possible interviewee we wouldn't know before anybody else I guess we'll see you for Fear the Walking Dead's eighth episode what was supposed to be the mid-season finale thank god it wasn't we got a lot to talk about <sighs> but we'll see you then bye be safe out there <laughs>